Bob Rubart from the Oracle Technology Network, and in this program we're going to be talking about Oracle Coherence and the community around Oracle Coherence. My guests for this conversation are Brian Oliver and Randy Stafford. Brian is the Senior Principal Solutions Architect for Oracle Coherence, and Randy is Architect at Large for Coherence Product Development. Gentlemen, how are you doing today? Great, great. Bob. Thank you. All right, so tell me about the Coherence community on Java.net. So, uh, well, I'll, I'll get started. Uh, apparently, it was uh, my baby. So, um, you know, a, a while ago, a few years ago, I think it was probably four years ago, we started um, working with the Coherence community through um, our Coherence Incubator project. And, um, you know, the idea of our Incubator project was to take, you know, a lot of the uh, examples that we work with customers through POCs, um, things that we've built internally, and have a way of sort of providing that out to customers. And, and we did so through a you know, specific custom site. Um, and, uh, you know, we made the source available as sort of example and documentation. Um, you know, and some people would take that and work with it and uh, include it in their own projects. It was sort of like an open source model. Um, we never really, we never really sort of made it truly open source and embraced it in that, in that, in that way. So um, you know, this year, uh, um, what we did was we decided to move that sort of our custom infrastructure that we built and maintained ourselves into more of a sort of standardized uh, format. And um, all of that work uh, basically moved into the Java.NET community. So off the Java.NET site. Um, we established, you know, this, um, our coherence incubator um, there, but we actually did that under the umbrella of a coherence community. Um, really, we had this idea that, you know, the incubator was just one one thing that we were, we were playing around with in, sort of, in terms of coherence, but we had a lot of other projects and a lot of ideas. We also had other customers who were producing, um, you know, projects based around uh, coherence, uh, open source projects. So, um, you know, the coherence incubator sort of became the first part, if you like, of what we saw as a uh, wider vehicle for interaction with, you know, customers, um, people evaluating coherence and, uh, you know, Oracle engineering, consulting, um, partners and so on. Um, and, uh, you know, over, over the time we've started to add uh, new projects to that. So. You know, one of the projects we added to that was, you know, our Oracle Tools sort of testing framework. And, um, uh, you know, that work was really spun out of stuff that we had in the incubator. Um, Randy, you, you've added some stuff in there as well. Yes. Uh, I uh, took on a task for the Coherence product team of upgrading our implementation of the Hibernate second-level cache uh, service provider interface um, the previous implementation had been in the coherence product code itself, and we made the decision to move the new implementation into a coherence community project. So um, Brian uh, gave me a jump start on how to use all the nice infrastructure that's there, and I um, developed and committed and released the new uh, Hibernate second level cache implementation on top of coherence through the coherence community and it was a fun experience um, great infrastructure for developing um, projects um, it's uh, completely mavenized the sources on github um, and the java.net site um, provides a lot of nice facilities for issue tracking mail list um, and downloads for example I put my Java 1 presentation up there um, for people to to download so it's really nice infrastructure for developing coherence related uh, projects in particular and since Brian mentioned Oracle tools the testing framework uh, I was able to leverage that in my uh, functional test suites for the Hibernate integration and use it to control processes including database processes and coherence processes um, all from within um, a J unit test class uh, so that that's also really nice infrastructure so about so about how many projects are now involved in the in incubator I'm going to count um, I think there's about four now that uh, that are, you know, have basically signed up users I mean the incubator is 
um, probably the most popular because it's sort of quite a broad appeal across coherence, uh, you know, coherence community as, as, as such. But at the same time, we're seeing quite a strong adoption of the Oracle Tools project. And Oracle Tools is designed to simplify creating mostly functional test suites uh, based on JUnit um, for you know, multi-process and distributed applications. Uh, you know, often developers end up having to write scripts in, for different platforms. So if you want to run on Windows, you want to run on Linux, or you want to run on OS X, like, you basically have to create scripts for all of them. Or you end up having to write stuff in Ant, and, and we wanted a way that um, allowed Java developers to do stuff in Java, so without having to know a whole bunch of stuff. And so, Oracle Tools itself is quite a large project, which um, provides that infrastructure. And um, you know, although it came out of the Coherence Incubator, there's only one part of Oracle Tools that's specific to Coherence. So um, we're actually using it in our uh, Jcash implementation. Um, which has got nothing to do with coherence. The you know our spec and RI that's part of the Java community process, um, which is you know completely you know away from coherence. Although coherence will eventually implement it, you know we're leveraging Oracle tools inside of that. So you know Randy leveraged it within the Spring framework. Oh uh, sorry, within the um, Hibernate framework uh, that we've added. Um, that said, we also have released our sp new Spring integration as well as part of the coherence community project. So. You know, one of the things that we see is that you know the the coherence community project on Git um, on Java.net um, allows us to uh, innovate at the pace that you know a lot of these uh, a lot of the open source projects innovate um, without disturbing the core coherence product. Um, and those those things are, that's quite an interesting dynamic. So we can work with the community as fast as the community wants to work. Without having to, you know, wait to build features into coherence as part of our, you know, general uh, release train, um, it's uh, that, that makes us very, it makes it very reactive. Um, you know, so there's the incubator project, there's the Oracle Tools project. We have the Spring integration, which is for coherence 12.1.2. We have the Hibernate integration project as well. Um, we also have, uh, we're starting to see some other projects come along, um, some external consultants. In fact, one of the chaps that wrote the first Coherence book has a set of tools for Coherence himself. So um, if you look on GitHub, which is where we host all the source, you know, obviously all open source, anyone can fork, fork it um, uh, and, you know, and contribute back. Um, you can actually see all of the source code, and you can interact with us. You can see what uh, you know, what our development team is doing, um, what other customers are doing, and so on. It's uh, so it's quite a dynamic uh, community that we're creating. Um, it, like in the past, we you know all the issue tracking systems are all internal to Oracle, and you know as part of you know embracing open source and being um, you know really be involved a lot more in the community. You know all of the issues that are now um, raised ideas, all of that sort of stuff is now on java.net. It's public, everyone can see it, uh, which is really nice because, you know, it's great that, you know, some people who, you know, maybe they have a spare Saturday and they pick up an issue and implement it and create a pull request for us to, to integrate it in. So um, you, you see a lot more involvement. In the past, you know, there was that involvement, but it was pretty much done, you know, sort of internally. You know, we, we, we'd chat by email and we'd, you know, do these sorts of things, have hangouts with them. So now it's um, you know, it, it's very much along that open source um, you know, ideology, if you like. Um, one of the things that we've also done, you know, moving into the community is adopted pretty much the standard Java licensing terms. So the licensing used for uh, OpenJDK, the licensing used for Glassfish, the license using for OpenSolaris. You know, we use exactly the same licensing model, which is the CDDL or cover license. Um, and in fact, if, if you want to be a contributor or if you already are a contributor to, say, OpenJDK or any of those, you actually already can be a contributor to any of the Coherence community projects. There's no additional permissions. There's no, you know, all, all of that is now very consistent and easy to, easy to do. And actually, it turns out the same. If, you're, if you turn out, if you want to become a Coherence um, contributor, you also automatically become available to contribute to OpenJDK. So... So you know, it's really we're really trying to bring like Java, even though Coherence is a you know a commercial product from Oracle. Um, you know, it's built with Java. We use Java, and there should be no reason why you know 
you have to have these sort of two separate lines when doing this sort of open source um, community development. So it's been quite a big effort. You know, I think in the last year we we put a lot of effort into you know ratifying a license agreement, getting getting all of those sorts of things approved, moving our source code base over to GitHub, mavenizing it so it's all friendly for people to use. Um, Moving it to use Oracle tools instead of our own internal testing frameworks. So you know anyone should be able to pick up this source code and just like download it and run you know quite complicated distributed tests without having to set anything up. Um, I think it's also worth pointing out that um, we have set up continuous integration with the coherence product development process itself, so that um, as as coherence continues to evolve and new features are being added to coherence we can um, detect whether uh, any of the coherence changes will have a, a negative impact on the uh, community project code bases. Uh, and and as, as Brian mentioned, the um, mm -hmm. uh, Alex Sailovich Oracle tools, or Alex Sailovich's coherence tools and, and another project that we're considering waiting in the wings, um, it's an in integration of coherence with an open source enterprise service bus from, from Apache. Um, just the growth in the number of projects kind of demonstrates the um, the the viability of the whole idea of you know engaging the community and collecting um, all of these um, nice frameworks that are out there. Um, we have user groups around the world, um, particularly London, where people have developed um, so, some nice capabilities that are sort of in the coherence ecosystem, but now we have a vehicle for um, collecting them up if, if the authors are interested and um, sort of formally making them available to the world through the community websites. This, I mean, this this is really interesting. Uh, I, I know both of you are directly involved with coherence, but this model seems to be really taking off. Are you aware of any plans to do something similar with other Oracle products? So we, we've certainly had um, conversation with other teams at Oracle, and you know, in the past, um, you know, you know, we've we've had OTN and we've had other you know other efforts in this in this area, and Oracle does have like um, you know certain approaches around dealing with example what what I think we would we would t typically call example where, and and how that's dealt with and how it's published. Um, it, it certainly see we certainly see that there's a movement towards some of these things. I mean, um, I, I don't think we're going to move to open source like our core, you know, right. or open source coherence. But there's a lot of things that you know, like the Spring integration, for example. We we built that outside the product, then we put it in the product, and then we sort of went, you know, really months before we released the latest version of coherence, we actually pulled it out of the product and went, you know, this really belongs in the community. Uh, we'd like to work with you know the teams who are working with Spring and the customers are working with Spring, and the easiest way to do that to help customers using coherence is to actually do that in a you know in a community sort of approach. So we we look at you know in some ways we look at integrations now slightly differently to that which we did in the past, and and um, you know we have some other integrations with actual Java tools that we're hoping to release shortly as well. So. You know, Java itself has you know released a whole bunch of new tools. Um, um, and, and to go to your point, like so, Visual uh, J Visual VM is a Java.NET project. It's sponsored by Oracle. It ships as part of the JDK. Um, you know, that's in addition. It's built in a community mode, and um, everything's on Java.NET. You can go and get the source. You can look at issue tracking and um, but at the same time, you know, Oracle also ships, you know, the new uh, mission control stuff with with Java Seven. That's not done in the open source. It's you know, open source approach. It's very specific to the Oracle's J JVM. But you have both, and so you know, it's really nice to have that model. And and in fact, with coherence, we have plugins for both. One is one is built in the community approach model, and one's one's built in sort of more of a proprietary model. So. Um, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages to, to, to both styles. And, um, you know, I think the, our, biggest, our biggest step forward is, um, you know, I think one of the things we had to do was ratify how we, how we work with the community. I mean, the incubator was, was a great thing, and it still is a great thing. We have actually a lot more <laughs> involvement now. Um, but just ratifying things like the license, like getting a, a license that, you know, 
that people would, would actually appreciate. You know, there are so many different open source licenses we could choose and that process alone involved quite a bit of community involvement So, um, uh, to choose that thing. Um, I know I know the um, you know WLS guys have been uh, have been working towards this sort of model. I, I know the Toplink uh, Toplink team had been has been working towards this sort of model. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting to to see that we're starting to leverage I think um, the Java.net um, community, you know, the website, the infrastructure they have there. Um, more in that open source mode, whereas in the past we would just you know put examples up on OTM and, and that that's sort of where it would go. So um, I think there is a slight shift in focus in the coherence team. Um, you know, it's, we're quite passionate. We work with customers a lot. Um, uh, some engineering teams don't work as much with customers, and that's just the nature of their product. Whereas you know the nature of coherence, we and we do a lot of work with customers. So having the Java.net as an approach to do that is uh, has been very helpful. So, so okay. So this is on Java.net. Is there a is there a nice short URL you can give people to find uh, the co the coherence community on Java.net? Uh, yeah, you can just Java.net slash coherence. Um, Beautiful. <laughs> it, it's pretty straightforward. And in 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 that community, you can actually just type. Um, you can just go to Java.net and search for coherence, and then it will list um, list the current excuse me current projects under that banner as well. You know, it's interesting. Like with Java.net, it's more than just um, you know, it's more than just a source code project repository. A lot of the global Java user groups use Java.net as their way of communicating because there's like forums, there's all the email lists, there's like uh, you know, event management. Like there's all of these things that are in there as well, um, including source code management. And for us, we actually chose to use GitHub um, because you know that's what most of the community said they want to use. So. Um, you know, if you if you've already got a GitHub account, like we don't have to force you to get another account in some other system. It's like okay, we'll we'll right. do what the majority of people want to do, and so hence we, we we picked up GitHub as our as our approach. I do need to make one small correction there. It's Java.net slash projects slash coherence. Wow. Um, this morning, I before the the call here, I Googled coherence community, and the top hit is the OTN page. Um, right. That's associated with the middleware product coherence. There's a, a community tab on there somewhere. Um, so to hit to hit the Java.net coherence community, which really is the landing page for for the the whole initiative, it's uh, Java.net slash projects slash coherence. Okay. Well, I will uh, I will make sure to put that URL down here in the uh, in the description section just below this video, so people can find that. And Plus, the other, go ahead. The other place you can go is actually the GitHub as well. If you do coherence hyphen community, you'll find it. You'll yeah, find that it. one. That one shows up in the Google search results for coherence community, but the Java.net one doesn't right now. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll help people find that. Well, gentlemen, I told you I'd keep you for five minutes, and we're pushing on twenty. So I'm going to let oh. you get on with your lives. <laughs> but this okay. is a great conversation. This sounds. This is really interesting and an exciting wrinkle in. Uh, in uh, in getting the community to interact it with uh, product development, so uh, I think uh, I think people will be interested in this. So uh, my guests have been uh, Brian Oliver and Randy Stafford. Uh, they're the people behind the uh, coherence community on Java.net. Uh, make sure you check that out, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bob. Cheers. Thanks, Brian. Cheers, Rodney. Cheers, Bob.